Let us pray for inspiration. Holy Spirit, you fill our hearts. Kindle in them the fire of your love. Fill our minds with the light of your wisdom. And relax our bodies. Help them to be here, now, present to you and your grace. Amen. Well, you all know someone, and that someone may be you, with an unused exercise bike in the garage or a closet or shoved in some corner of the house. Whoever bought that bike paid very good money for it and worked really hard researching, probably getting the exact right bike, read all of the instruction manuals, but just didn't do the kind of work needed to make a difference in their health, namely to ride the bike regularly, use it. Or maybe you know someone, and that someone may be you, with an unused keyboard or piano at home. Whoever bought that spent really good money on it, did some hard work researching the exact right kind of instrument, read all the instruction manuals, everything about those different keys and notes. Fascinating, fascinating. But just didn't do the kind of work needed to learn to play the instrument, which is daily practice regular instruction, or maybe you know someone, and that someone might be you, with an unused collection of foreign language CDs. (laughs) Whoever bought that collection spent a lot of money and did some hard work researching the right teaching approach, read all those instruction manuals, but just didn't do the kind of work needed to actually learn a foreign language, reciting, repeating words, phrases, sentences over and over and over and over and over until they are second nature for us. Sometimes money spent on such things is just a waste. And sometimes the work spent researching and reading and studying is just a waste because it's not the kind of work that produces the sort of effects that we want. Or as the prophet Isaiah says in today's first reading, why spend your money on that which is not bread? Why waste your labor on that which does not satisfy? Of course, Isaiah is not talking about exercise bikes, keyboards, and collections of foreign language CDs. He's talking about something much more important. He's talking about our spirits what nurtures, nourishes our spirits and develops our spirits, knowing God, knowing God's ways. And he's saying you can't buy such knowledge. So don't waste your money on hundreds of theology books and courses about God because all of that money that you've spent is not really going to help you to know God. It's not bread. It's not really bread that will nourish you. And don't waste your labor reading and researching and Googling everything you can find about God online, everywhere else, because that will not nourish your spirit, develop your spirit. That will not help you know God. It won't do it. Because knowing about God is not the same thing as knowing God. Knowing God requires no money whatsoever, not even one penny. And it requires only the right kind of work, inner work, spiritual work. That's what 
Isaiah means in today's passage when he says, Seek the Lord. Turn to the Lord. He's talking about having a relationship with God. And no amount of knowledge about God can ever substitute having a relationship with God. And a crucial kind of inner work needed for such a relationship with God is prayer. Prayer has a very simple definition to me. It's any form of time and attention spent seeking the one who is beyond our thoughts. As God says in today's passage from Isaiah, right? My thoughts are beyond your thoughts. My ways are beyond your ways. Prayer is any method of opening ourselves to this mysterious other. And it can take many different forms. It can take the form of your own words to God. It can take the form of words from Scripture that you use in addressing God. It can take the form of writing a letter to God or singing a song to God or dancing in front of God or sitting in silence before God or gazing at a candle in the darkness before God. What's important when it comes to prayer is an openness openness to moving beyond our own noisy opinions and judgments to the one who is beyond our thoughts and whose ways are beyond our ways. That's a little something about prayer. Important spiritual practice if you want a relationship with God. But besides prayer, there's another important kind of inner work that you need to have in order to have a relationship with God. And that's the work of inner knowledge, growing in knowledge of yourself. We have to know our desires and our fears. We have to know the ways that we think, the ways that we act to have a relationship with God. Because if we don't know ourselves, then we'll simply turn God into whatever we need God to be. God will be the one who agrees with all of our opinions. Oh, that's a very good opinion. I like that. <laughs> agrees with all the rationalizations, justifications about ourselves. The one who rewards us, we think, this God as we imagine, whenever we do something good and, and maybe punishes us, we do something bad or at least punishes other people. We might get upset if we are not rewarded because this is how we see God. In other words, if we don't see our thoughts and our ways for what they are, we'll just assume that they're God's thoughts and ways. And then prayer will just reinforce those thoughts and ways rather than opening ourselves to God's. I only began to discover this truth when I was about 25 years old. You know my story, many of you. I had studied about God my whole life. A religious grade school, a religious high school, a religious college, a seminary, a theology, a theological seminary. I was studying to be a Catholic priest. And yet, all of those ideas and all of those thoughts in my head, well, there was something wrong at the age of 25. I finally said it. There's something wrong. There's something missing. I was feeling very anxious, and I left the seminary. I left the track to ordination. And for 10 years, I longed to pray. But I couldn't pray. Because I had so many ideas and thoughts about God in my head, so many theories and doctrines, I didn't know what was true. And I didn't want to pray to a God invented by other people, theologians over the centuries. I didn't want to pray to a God who was just a projection of my thoughts or my desires, so I just didn't pray. But during those 10 years, God did not abandon me. 
God led me on a journey of self-knowledge. A very intense, intensive journey of self-knowledge. I was struggling. I was coming out. That was new. Anxious about new kinds of relationships. What's this all about? Insecure about money matters and jobs and career and all the decisions that go into that. Insecure about losing the approval of my family, society, so many things. And so, and so I sought therapy. I went to therapy because I wanted to know myself. I wanted to understand and accept myself as I was with all of my light and all of my shadows. And only after 10 years of such inner work, 10 years, I finally started to pray again. Despite my questions that continued about God, despite anxieties in my life, despite all the unresolved things in my life, I continue, started to pray again. Because for me then, prayer was this openness to reality rather than trying to manufacture the reality that I wanted. Prayer became for me an act of presence, an act of honesty, and an act of courage. Also important for my self-knowledge was becoming part of a community of faith again after 10 years because being on a journey with other people I knew would help keep me honest about my thoughts and my ways. And being on a journey with other people I knew I would receive support in accepting myself and accepting God's unconditional love. So that was all important part of my self-knowledge, becoming part of a community of faith. Another great tool for me in these last five or six years of self-knowledge has been the Enneagram. It's a method, a spiritual tool that combines very good psychology and very good spirituality and has made a tremendous difference in my life and in the lives of many people that I know and self-knowledge. So I invite you, I teach the, the Enneagram Every now and then, I invite you to learn to know yourself through this tool. It's very specific, very helpful. But besides tools like the Enneagram and support like therapy and being part of a community of faith, there are many other spiritual practices that help us grow in self-knowledge. Journaling helps people grow in self-knowledge. Recording, hmm my wants, my feelings, my fears. What are the things that are going through my mind? What are my patterns? All kinds of ways to journal, use journaling. Journaling is helpful. Spiritual direction with a mentor. It's very helpful in growing in self-knowledge. Art can be used in growing in self-knowledge. Pastor Aaron teaches how to use a mandala to grow spiritually. Music is good. Prayer itself, of course, is another way to grow in self-knowledge when you combine it with other, other forms of inner work, knowing yourself. All of this in the service, ultimately, of having a real, honest relationship with the real God, not the God that we construct the God who says in today's passage from the book of Isaiah, as high as the heavens are from my thoughts from the earth, so are my thoughts from your thoughts, and so are my ways from your ways. The God who speaks today through Jesus in the passage from John's gospel, who says, whoever drinks the water that I will give them will never be thirsty again. They'll be satisfied to have life, 
real life, spiritual life, eternal life. So taste and see. Taste and see how good is the Lord. This mysterious other. Beyond our wildest imaginations, we can never put God in a box. We struggle to use language. But the concepts will never be there. What we hope for is to taste and see the Lord through our own spiritual life and growth, our prayer, our self-knowledge. Taste and see how good is the Lord. Don't waste your money on that which is not bread. Don't waste your labor on that which will not satisfy. Not just exercise bikes, keyboards, poor language collections, but amassing knowledge rather than knowing God. Taste and see.